Hello, I'm back, and I have some more movies to show you. Um, one of my, another one of my favorite directors, uh, Fellini. Um, these will be mostly DVDs again. There's just one one videotape. Uh, that's what I'm going to show at the start, and then we'll go from there into the DVDs. So let's go to the first movie. This is. Fellini Satyricon. Uh, let's see if you can see all that right there. Visually, it's a very interesting film. You know, like that shot at the bottom there where they're sort of jumping around naked in a steam bath kind of thing. Um, the, it's not the greatest film, but there's, vi there's certain, you know, with the Fellini movie, you have some visual nice touches in the film. Um, but there is one memorable scene, uh, that it's an earthquake scene. It's near the, it's near, near the start of the film. And, uh, the main character and his lover, they live in this, like, cleft or uh, like a niche of a, of a, a of a gorge it's like a rock face and all these people live in the in, in the rock face and there's this gigantic earthquake and i i don't know how they did it and it must have caused quite a mint to do but you know that's a that's a fascinating scene and there's some other fascinating scenes like the scene with the uh rowboat uh, you know uh, i guess there's slaves rowing the boat and, and the sort of the giant aspect of the ship and all that's kind of interesting. Um, but generally speaking, this is not his greatest film. It's, it's Oh, and there's another interesting thing. There's a, at, at the start of the movie, there's a scene where the two main characters, they see a giant head being moved through a hall. And that's pretty interesting. But Fellini has those nice flourishes in his films, those nice visual images, and that's Satyricon for you. And, and another thing about Fellini is that he was very experimental, especially, you know, getting to this stage. You know, he started playing with narrative and and not run, you know, not doing it like a conventional kind of Hollywood way of doing things. He would, like... You know, I'll, I'll show you in like some other movies as well, but like some of the scenes in, in Satyricon, the, the main character is not even in them. So, um, and, and Satyricon is based on a novel that was written in ancient Rome, or I don't know, maybe it's a poem, but um, I believe the original Petronius Satyricon wasn't completely finished. And so Fellini um basically uh made it made that into part of his point of the movie which is that it's kind of uh, unfinished as well so he sort of left this un unfinished look to the movie you know so it's, it's sort of innovative with the narrative <clears throat> in that aspect so now let's get to the dvds we got the strata Strata means the road, but I'm pretty pretty sure that's what it means. And I think it was on some top ten lists of all time. Um, it stars Juliana Messina, who was Fellini's wife, and she plays this young woman um, who sold to her family to a uh, circus performer, played by Anthony Quinn. And it's a very sad movie, but a very uplifting film as well. And, uh, how, how, I don't want to spoil things, but sometimes you realize you have a great thing with you, a great thing happening to you, a good, good fortune on you, and you ruin it, um, in the end. I guess that's the message of this movie, uh. I, I hope I'm not spoiling that, but I'm not. I'm not really describing everything, so maybe it's not spoiling it. But 
that's the strata for you and it's got it's got those very first surrealistic touches that Fellini would have in his later films like the three man band that would be um taken out to more length in films like eight and a half but that's the two, uh La Strada. And here's here's one of my favorite movies of all time. I love this movie. It's uh, La, Stra um, La Dolce Vita. That's Anita Ekberg right there. And then you have some nice images in the back here. You know, the woman plays Madeline and uh, Mastriani. And, of course, another Ekberg uh, photograph. Let me see. The Trevi Fountain scene, classic scene. This is the film where you get the the word paparazzi from. Um, there's a character who's a friend of Marcello Robini, who's the main character of this movie, and it. His friend and Mar Mar Marcello Mastriani plays this uh, this guy, and he's a journalist, and he reports on the rich and famous and the royals, royalty of Europe, and um, it's his his, his uh, journeys with at, at, uh, during the usually a, a lot of it takes place at night, and he sort of like wakes uh, stays up all night. Sometimes he sleeps with a woman during the night and um, parties all night long. And it, it shows the decadence of Roman society. It was banned by the Vatican when it came out, but then it sort of flipped over after a while. And it showed the Vatican regards it as one of their best, one of the best films ever made. I mean, like a recommended film that, of the Vatican because it shows the decadence of what can go wrong in following a decadent path. But... Um, La Dolce Vita means the good life. That's like the literal trans. That that's like the real the the literal translation, or or the realistic the sweet life the good life. You know, Dolce. Um, and uh, yeah, it, he's engaged to this woman, but he sort of flirts and hangs around with other women, and uh, he has a friend that's a journalist and who has a family and is wealthy and. Something happens to that guy, but I won't tell you what. And um, it doesn't have the most happy endings. And again, like I was saying in the, my Kurosawa DVD video, um, you know, sometimes things don't always turn out best. And, you know, that's sometimes true with real life, you know, because, you know, sometimes life gives you a pit rather than a, a plum or whatever. It, it doesn't always give you the best deal because you know that's how life sometimes happens you know it's not all smooth roads you know sometimes it's bumps you know so it's La Dolce Vita for you and there's just beautiful images in this film like when um, Anita Ekberg is walking in the Trevi Fountain and then Marcello just gets into the fountain with her with his tuxedo on it's just great great cinematography great film Next one is another really great one, another one of my favorites, and it's Eight and a Half. This is regarded as like one of the greatest films ever made, and it's about a film director, again played by Marcello Mastriani, and his name is uh, Guido Ansalmi, and it it, it 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 blends the film blends re, um, actual time. Uh, memory, daydreams, and dreams. So this film is, I, I would say, the the embarkment point for where Fellini plays with narrative and 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 really mess you know messes around with narrative. And I, I think it's a film you had to see more than once because I think you're going to be you might be confused you know if you watch it the first time you'll say what why did that happen and why did this happen and if if you watch it more than once, I I think you'll get much get much more grounded into what what's happening, what's not happening, and um, 
um, he, he's he's going to make this movie, but he doesn't know about what, and he says he's having a midlife crisis, and again, there's a, all this, you know, Fellini was a big um, woman lover, and there's all this, you know, um, um, sort of um, polygamous kind of uh, aspect to the film, you know, uh, more love of more than one woman, all sorts of different women, and that that's Fellini for you, you know. Um, but this is a great film. Um, I'll give I'll give you like a hint that I I saw a scene in this film, a shot in a scene at the end of the movie. If you look really closely, um, you'll you'll see Guido go by three people, three women that are seated that are seated on a like a bench or something, not a bench, but like a wall. And if you just look real closely, and it's just, just like a split second, and if you've seen Salvador Dali's paintings, you'll see the painting, three young surrealist women holding the skins of an orchestra. If you if you look at that painting, and then you look at the last scene where he's going to the press conference just before he gets to the table, you'll see those women from that painting. And, you know... that. You had to pick up on those things, but that that's pretty fascinating. And and this is a happy ending, um, and maybe tragic too, you know, because it doesn't pan out the way you think it would. But it still has a happy ending to it. But it, it's a really good movie. And the next one up, it's not as good as those, but it's, it's pretty pretty interesting movie. It was Fellini's first color movie, and that's Juliet of the Spirits. Uh, not really any pictures here, mostly text. Um, this is about a woman, she's like a clairvoyant, she can like see supernatural stuff. I don't know if clairvoyant or it were, but she sees things that other people don't, and she, she there's things in her past that reminder that have like supernatural elements to it and um she believes her husband is cheating on him, on her on her and um um there's various incidents you know where she spent time with her mother and her sisters and her neighbor and um i wouldn't say as great as the other ones i've mentioned but it's an interesting film and it's very entertaining i would say so that's julia the spirits and the last one is a film I don't think I liked when I first saw it, but I've grown to like it. And it's got beautiful artwork on it. I, I know people have shown this on the YouTube already, you know, the artwork. But I'll just, you know, from, just for my sake, I'll just show it again. Got the snowball fight. You got that, uh, this character here that's a... Uh, one of the love interests you got uh, th this woman here she's a she's regarded as like the town beauty and another beauty Mussolini of course and the fascists um, this guy's like a narrator um, this is the events within this small town that I believe it means I remember Amarcord. Um and um some of the incidents that happen in the film, like Satyricon, they have they're independent of other characters and so the film jumps around a lot. There there is a little bit of a little bit like where there's a main character, a young boy that is growing up in a family and his mother's get sick and his father's kind of a um, doesn't really, he it was really hard on his son, and but it's an interesting film, and I, I highly recommend it. Um, it's like what happens during your life and growing up and a coming of age story. I'm I'm running out of time, so I hope you enjoyed this. I'm sorry I, I I'm rushing up here, but goodbye, and I'll see you in the next video.